here we will discuss in detail about further applications of taylor's theorem and it is really playing very important role in approximation of the function by taylor's polynomial so all about that we will try to approximate a function by taylor's polynomial and we know that when we are having a polynomial polynomial is a very nice function we can find value of polynomial at certain point in a very simple way just it is about what uh, a squaring of terms or a cubing of term or just uh, exponent of term okay uh, exponent of the uh, variable so that's why it is easy to find because we just do algebra multiplication of the variable so that's why it would be very easy to compute and uh, very simplest com that uh, computation is happening through multiplication and addition addition and multiplication both happens to be the simplest uh, it is just the backbone of <coughs> algebraic calculation what we call it so that's why whatever things are there whether function is uh, uh, any respective of whether it is transcendental whether it is algebraic or whatever it is it is so just we try to approximate it through uh, polynomial framework uh, that we are calling it taylor's uh, polynomial uh, thanks to taylor's theorem and we will try to see the uh, approximation part of that function and in the process of approximation uh, definitely if it is it is an approximation then uh, definitely there would be certain amount of error that means we talk about accuracy what is the accuracy so that error and accuracy both are related to each other so those things we need to discuss in detail and uh, it would be very much related with uh, m that number of terms that is coming in the taylor's theorem so that's where it is really interesting so coming to outline of today's lecture i will talk first about the approximation of uh, value of a function at certain point so sometimes what will happen <coughs> your function would be very much complicated and if uh, someone is asking to find the value of function at that at a particular point then that computation would be a little bit tough either you need a calculator or something some uh, tools you need in order to calculate that function so that even if uh, once you are using tools any kind of calculator the calculator is not giving to provide you exact value that calculator is doing approximation so that means calculator calculator that calculator is based on some kind of uh, taylor's uh, taylor's theorem so some kind of taylor polynomial it would be based on that so that's why uh, uh, we are getting a very fast result from calculator because they are doing some kind of uh, interesting uh, application of taylor's theorem that we will see it here and afterward we will discuss about uh, few interesting infinity we can establish with the help of taylor's theorem so that also infinity is playing very important role in order to get bounds of various function bound is really so that we can say that a function will have value between this number and that number so bound is really interesting and if you are coming with infinity it will find further further application later we will see it and afterward afterward few more application i will discuss in detail about about taylor's theorem okay <clears throat> so coming to first part that approximation of a, a value of a function at a point it is really interesting we will see a few example here and later i will provide further example as well exercise for exercise purpose so coming to find a taylor approximation of a function so we have we are just trying to recall the taylor's theorem again so taylor's theorem it says that if you are having a function which is uh, differentiable uh, up to nth order at point x not whatever a statement i am saying just focus on that i am saying that we are having a function which is differentiable uh, at x not up to order n n may be greater than 1 uh, n may be 1 2 3 4 5 depends upon your choice in that process we are having a taylor's polynomial of uh, degree n or nth order also you can say that because it is uh, uh, what involving uh, derivative nth order derivative up to nth order derivative so also you can call it tn tn is nth order taylor polynomial or a taylor polynomial of degree n also you can call it like so in that case we can write the function in two form one this one is taylor polynomial plus remainder after n remainder generally remainder after n we are calling it so this remainder after n so if you our all intention is that uh, how many what would be the uh, appropriate value of n so that this taylor polynomial will approximately uh, approximate f of x if uh, this taylor polynomial, taylor polynomial is going to approximate f of x at the same time we will say that rn will what it will be very very 
very very near to zero that means it is approaching to zero that means this you can term at as a as an error in the process of approximation okay so that's why it is our intention i either try to make this function is near to f of x or try to make this rn near to zero so near to zero <coughs> that part is simple to find because it would be some kind of sequence and we had already seen that uh, how to find limit of a sequence so just find the limit of the sequence if it is uh, zero or near to zero that means you can play epsilon k game and you come up with one uh, just uh, one value of uh, rn that would be very near to zero that you can come up with that for a given epsilon you, you can come up with that that uh, that play you know that okay so in that process <coughs> we can get an explicit form of rn uh, thanks to Langra langrange langrange has given this form this we also call it mean value theorem through the it is coming through mean value theorem and it is defined as, like this way uh, derivative of the function at c uh, n plus one the derivative of the function at c where c happens to be uh, any number between x and x naught c happens to be between any any number between x and x naught we know about x naught so at hand we are having x naught it would be given to us then we just deal in a deal at x naught what does it mean when always i am saying at x naught means we are dealing a small neighborhood of x naught that we call it delta neighborhood of x naught in delta neighborhood of x naught x you can take either from right or from left uh, as per your choice from where you want to take so if you are taking x from right then uh, c would be here between suppose x is here then c would be between x naught and c if x is from left then c would be between x and x naught so that depends upon situation from where x you are willing to take but remember that x would be from the delta neighborhood of x naught so here the remainder term it can be used to estimate the error in approximating a function by its taylor polynomial i am saying that its taylor polynomial I add uh, here Taylor polynomial uh, coefficient of Taylor polynomial would be de determined by the respective derivative of the function at x naught at x naught so that's why we are saying that it's Taylor polynomial so here again uh, I had mentioned that there are two situations in the process of uh, approximation one if n is given that means uh, someone is given uh, saying that uh, you approximate uh, the function of a Taylor polynomial of degree n that n is specified to you, you or uh, prescribed to you in that case then question would be what is the error in that process what error you are committing so that error you have to find that means what is the accuracy of the your approximation what is the accuracy of your whether it is 100 100 percent it says that we are getting exact value of f of x or just a little bit less than that so that approximation situation would come here another situation it's saying that suppose someone is saying that you are having degree of accuracy or a degree of error or error is given to you then how many terms you need how many what would be degree of uh, appropriate degree of the uh, Taylor polynomial so that you will get that kind of accuracy so two situations are coming so we will solve problem based on these two situations various problem we will solve it here so first problem is coming like this way that means we are having a function that happens to be directly if you are trying to calculate value of function at the at a point it would be little bit complicated but when we try to find it through Taylor's uh, approximation it would be uh, relatively easier so how it is happening so question is something like that uh, that means we are having a function uh, q root of x plus 1 okay and we I'm asking to find value of this function at x equal to uh, 0.3 I'm asking to find the value of this one at x equal to 0.3 then this would be a little bit cumbersome because it is dealing with the uh, cube root of uh, this uh, uh, x plus 1 cube root of x plus 1 so uh, we won't uh, go in that pattern what we do in place of that we will try to come up with the Taylor approximation with the given n n is given here n is given here then situation would be that we have to find the, what is the accuracy or what is the error that means we need to take a Taylor polynomial of degree 2 through which we try to approximate first this function and after that uh, we will find the value of the uh, that Taylor approximation at 
x equal to 0.3 and later we will see that uh, in that process uh, what uh, error we are committing so that we will see it here so here simply situation would be that it is smartly i'm just uh, uh, trying to solve this one in, in a very algorithmic way uh, we try to point out, point out what are needed things so first needed thing is the function what is the function so function we are having uh, 1 plus x to the power 1 by 3 that means cube root of 1 plus x so that one is given to us this function from the problem so problem is this one this one sentence problem it would it is next to what we are looking we are looking uh, in the neighborhood of zero that means x naught is equal to zero that we are having further uh, the what would be the desired degree of taylor polynomial through which we will try to approximate the function that would be two so that's why n equal to two is also given here now let us do uh, our further uh, uh, what we call it uh, uh, processing in order to approximate so uh, that means n equal to 2 that means we need uh, the first derivative and second derivative of the function so first derivative of the function it would be uh, this and second derivative of the function it would be this easily we can uh, find the derivative of this function because it is just what uh, it is simple algebraic function so easily we can find it Actually, uh, it is already in explicit form so we can find the respective first and second derivative once we are having derivative we can talk about uh, a second order Taylor polynomial or a Taylor polynomial of degree 2. So, what would be that? That, that would be given by this. Coefficient is determined by the corresponding derivative. So, this is the uh, T2. A Taylor polynomial of degree 2. T2 x. Okay. So, we got uh, Taylor polynomial and in that process we say that from the Taylor's theorem f of x can be written as sum of uh, this Taylor polynomial plus remainder so now we focus on what is the remainder so we know about to uh, see where it would be because we are dealing in the small neighborhood of zero so from here easily we can decide what would be remainder so remainder easily it can be uh, uh, through lagrange uh, remainder we can find uh, determine the remainder in term of c and x it would be this is the remainder okay let us focus on um, approximate value of function the f of x uh, at x uh, equal to 0.3 so if you try to find a uh, if, if i am asking to find value of function at 0.3 it would be a little bit cumbersome as i mentioned that you have to find the cube root of uh, 1 plus 0.3 okay that would be a little bit cumbersome but if i am asking to find the corresponding uh, taylor polynomial t2 of degree 2 or in a second order Taylor polynomial so it would be very simple to find because usually we know that f of 0 is known to us f, f dash of 0 is known to us f second dash of 0 is known to us these are very simple at x equal to 0 these are taking very simple value and here what we do here simply we do algebra over uh, 0.3 that means we do a squaring of 0.3 we take a multiplication of 0.3 and in that process simply i would like to say that uh, and even you can see here itself that uh, calculation of uh, uh, t2 of 0.3 it is very simple and that one is coming 1.09 so we can say that this point is an approximation of the function uh, function value at 0.3 and if you try to find a value of uh, function at 0.3, it would be uh, cube root of 1.03. Okay. Okay, 1.3, not 0.3. It would be 1.3. So here we are not getting an explicit form of this functional value. That one is a little bit complicated. So, so that's why we are talking about approximation. So we are saying that uh, this value as cube root of 1.3 is very near to 1.09. It is very near to 1.09 because here in real line we can visualize this point but we can't visualize directly this point. This value we can't visualize in real life because if you are drawing the function so 0.3 where it would be 0.3 it would be here 0.3 it would be here and uh, a square root of in that process it is it is coming something somewhere here we don't know where it would be it would be a little bit complicated yeah we know that uh, we are uh, taking quick cube root of 1.3 so definitely this value would be greater than one it is very much certain but uh, how much greater than one so that we don't know so here just through taylor's theorem taylor polynomial we come to know that uh, value would be 1.09 so value would be here 1.09 1.09 so that approximation is giving so we did here approximation okay so if we are performing approximation so 1.09 it is an approximated value of the function at point uh, point point three so what is the error 
So error we need to find. What is the error? Error bound or error? So error easily we can calculate it through that uh, remainder of term R2, remainder of N term. So here we are going to calculate error. So here this is the explicit form of error we are having. And here we know what what we know that uh, here uh, if you try to focus on uh, third derivative of this uh, quantity, it would be simply we will see that uh, it it is coming like this way. Uh, 5 by 81 times 1 plus c to the power uh, negative 8 by 3 and we know that this quantity would be always less than 1. Anyone can comment how it would be always less than 1? When c is uh, here, is it that uh, if c is between x and uh, 0, if c is between the right side of 0, uh, if c is here near to 0 in right hand side, the easily we can see that 1 plus c to the power uh, negative 8 by 3 that means 1 by 1 plus c to the power 8 by 3 that's where automatically this quantity would be less than 1. So that's where uh, from there we get this uh, upper bound of uh, error. So uh, this uh, error would be bounded above by this quantity and easily we can calculate this quantity. What does it give? It gives uh, uh, 1 by 600 and further if you try to put this one in decimal form it is coming in decimal form 10 to the power minus 2. 10 to the power minus 2. Second decimal uh, <coughs> meaningful day that 10 to the power minus 2 that it is coming this uh, that means uh, uh, second decimal place or something like that uh, second decimal you can talk it like this way uh, or something the second decimal simply you can say like this way so simply we can say that error is bounded by second decimal places say this places so this much uh, this error is very small error we can say that uh, we say that uh, the approximate value of the function at point point three uh, is actually very near to uh, 1.09 and that if it is very near to 1.09 what is the error we are committing so this much um, uh, this much amount of error we are committing this much amount of uh, maximum error would be this in that process so easily here bound error bound we are getting it in the process of approximation of a function at a point Taylor's polymer. Now, next we will discuss about another example that uh, if I am asking to find the value of E, that Napier constant that we are calling it. So, generally people are, are saying that uh, it is an irrational number, but uh, so people are saying that the value of E is, what is value of E? Anyone? Do you know what is the value of E? Napier constant? Anyone? And then 2.7 yeah, is what? Uh, 2.7 is a rational number. It is a rational 2.7. Simply you can write it uh, as a ratio of two integers, 27 by 10. Okay. Then, but what is e? e? Is a rational number or not? It is irrational number. So can we say that uh, 22, uh, 2.7 or 27 by uh, 10 is equal to e? It can't be because a rational number can't be equal to irrational number. Both are different. Both are. Uh, complement to each other. So that's why equality is not possible. Simply we say that uh, it is an approximate value. 2.7 is one approximate of E. In that process, E will have a sequence of approximation. So there are various approximation of A. So if we are uh, trying to find an approximate value of A, then the question is coming that, uh, tell me uh, an approximate value of A, uh, E, which is having error less than uh, 10 point minus 5. So it is definitely an approximate uh, approximated value. So if it, if it is an approximated value, then what is the difference between E and 2.7? The difference we need to know. The bound of the difference. So difference may be positive, may be negative. So depends upon that. So that's where we are taking modulus here. So what is the error? So this uh, you can call it error. What is the error bound or, or a maximum error that uh, worst case scenario that we are calling? What is the error? So that error we have to find. So here some here error is already given here. Error it is given in in the order of 10 to the power minus 5. So if order uh, error is given here, so error should be less than. Uh, so try to come up with one approximate value of e uh, where error is less than this one. So what would be that value? That value we have to find it. What is that value? So here uh, simply. Uh, uh, you will see that what would be the respective function through which we can proceed with uh, uh, this uh, problem in order to solve this problem. So simply the respective function would be f of x equal to e to the power x. 
the expo exponential function and uh, uh, we try to take the starting point what it would be uh, around which uh, point we are trying to see the expansion of this uh, or we are trying to see the behavior of taylor's theorem of this exponential function we are trying to see x not equal to 0 around and uh, we are trying to calculate the approximate value of this function where for value x equal to 1 so that's why if you are putting x equal to 1 then we will get e to the power 1 that means e okay now in the in this process uh, so what is happening that uh, we have to oh, find the bound of error that what would be bound of error it is already given that it would be less than 10 to the power minus 5 the bound this information is also given here in the question okay so let us do our uh, further uh, processing so here we have to find various derivative here n is not given and we have to find n is known to us error is given to us so there are two situations i had told that uh, sometimes n would be given that if n is given then uh, you have to find the error or bound of error if uh, bound of error is given then you, then that time you have to find the n what is n so here n is unknown to us so how we can find so how many terms of the taylor theorem we will take out uh, so that it will give an uh, approximate better approximation of uh, e with the error at most 10 to the power minus 5 okay uh, so here we are finding the various derivative of the exponential function so this is the this, these are the derivative of exponential function now next we will talk about approximation of, of or of uh, function by taylor's theorem okay so here that means we need to define Taylor's polynomial. So this is the corresponding Taylor's polynomial. Easily we can say that here n is unknown to us, but uh, we are able to write remainder uh, after n uh, in, in term of this. This is this explicit form. Okay, this is the explicit form of remainder, and we know that uh, n plus one the derivative of the function itself it would be again e to the power x. So we are just evaluating that at c. So it would it would be e to the power c. So this is the remainder term in explicit form that we are getting it. Okay, and further we will try to see the location of c. Where does c fall? Here, uh, simply we can say that uh, x, uh, we are trying to look behavior of the this function uh, in the neighborhood of zero. So uh, zero and right of zero, uh, one would is right of zero. C so c would falls between zero and one. Then that means right of zero. So easily we can say that if we come to know that c falls between 0 and 1 then what is the uh, bounded value of this we try to find a bind, bound of uh, rn so what would be e to, the, e to the power c what is the upper bound e to the power c definitely it would be uh, less than e what kind of function this one is exponential function it is coming like this monotonically increasing function everyone might be aware of that so automatically uh, e to the power uh, c would be less than e to the power e and e is what less than 3 because we don't feel compatible with uh, e notation so that's where better we try to get a better bound might be it, it, it would be a loose bound so here that's the uh, same perception i'm taking it as c falls between 0 and 1 so it simply implies that e to the power c is less than e and hence less than 3 okay so due to that we will get a upper bound of c and upper bound of c is what it is 3 by it is bounded above by 3 by factorial n plus 1 and we know that the maximum error bound that one is 10 to the power minus 5 so that means this quantity must have to be less than 10 to the power 5 so solve this infinity in order to get the value of n so we just try to find the various uh, possible value of n so if you are taking factorial 9 that factorial 9 is actually greater than uh, 3 into 10 to the power minus 5 so you have to take value of n it would be less than factorial 9 well, our value of n would be less than 9 so take n equal to 8 so n equal to 8 that n that would be our desired count count of the n okay and and it will provide our desired accuracy or desired error bound it will n equal to 8 it will provide our desired error bound so that is the uh, n equal to 8 is the solution so and if n equal to 8 is the solution then just we have to substitute n equal to 8 in this taylor's polynomial that means we have to uh, come up with t8 T8 is actually the corresponding Taylor polynomial of the uh, exponential function at value 1 at x equal to 1 which is giving an approximate value of uh, this 
Napier constant that happens to be this one and, and in the process of approximation of E by T8 at x equal to 1 uh, the error is less than 10 point minus 5. So this is the uh, this is the value desired value what we are desired approximated value of uh, this uh, E that we, we are uh, trying to find it uh, find it out which is having error less than 10 point minus 5. So that is the process to uh, approximate uh, value of the function. Now I will uh, talk about few more application of the uh, Taylor's theorem that one is inequality. How we can establish inequality of a uh, certain kind of inequality in, of a function of one variable that we will dis discuss here in detail. So it is also further uh, interesting application it is coming like this way. Uh, first question is coming that uh, we have to establish the inequality uh, that uh, cosine of x it is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 by x square for every real x so this infinity so again if someone is willing to calculate value of function at point uh, x uh, certain x so this this one is, is really complicated it is not possible only at certain point easily you can calculate like uh, uh, 0 or pi by 2 or pi by 3 or pi by uh, 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 in multiple of pi simply uh, pi and th at those value easily you can calculate value of cosine but uh, apart from that if you are taking a continuum value of x between uh, 0 to pi by 3 or 0 to uh, pi by 2 uh, any any real value then situation would be very would be very much complicated but this value is easy to calculate this value is relatively easy to calculate so that's why this inequality is very much beneficial in order to find a up a least value of cosine of x so that means least value it would be bounded below by this so that so uh, this inequality we can establish again with the help of taylor's theorem how we can establish so our here simply uh, we have to come up with the desired function so desired function is what it is f of x equal to cosine of x and uh, uh, where we are looking for this inequality uh, approximation we are looking at x not equal to 0 so if you are looking for x not equal to 0 here even uh, further if you talk about uh, uh, it is dealing with x square so what we have to do uh, just to come up with uh, uh, n equal to what it would be uh, first derivative then second derivative here n equal to 2 would come here in, into picture so by default uh, this infinity is suggesting n equal to 2 you, you have to proceed with okay so that you can proceed with the remainder term okay x naught so that's why we are finding this derivative so and this derivative i'm just giving again i have taken for the sake of simplicity i have just computed all the derivative of the cosine and you can just give a general framework like this way generalize like in this way for any k okay so now we try to talk about taylor's theorem so that means we are just bifurcating the function uh, into uh, t2 this taylor polynomial plus remainder after 2 remainder after 2 then what is the remainder so focus on remainder you need to know that so that's why i told that what is n easily so this infinity itself it says that n would be equal to 2 n equal to 2 okay x square due to x square term it is easily you can infer that what would be n okay so here just try to focus on the remainder so again we are taking lagrange remainder okay this is the lagrange remainder and we come up with an explicit form of the remainder uh, after uh, 2 after term 2 after uh, okay term 2 uh, so uh, just uh, try to find the bound over this one so what we do uh, we focus uh, we uh, here uh, we are dealing in the uh, small neighborhood of zero so there would be two scenario either we are dealing with right neighborhood of zero or left neighborhood of zero so if you are dealing with right neighborhood of zero that means x we are taking it from the right neighborhood of zero between zero and uh, pi from this side the in this in this case what would be c would be also this c always falls between uh, x naught and x so that's why if x we are taking between 0 and pi and hence we can say that c would be between 0 and pi so if c is between 0 to pi easily we can say that the corresponding remainder after two terms would be greater than or equal to 0 remainder after two terms so you can see that in that in that case uh, easily we can see that this quantity would be greater than or equal to 0 now suppose if we, we take another scenario if x we are taking between minus pi to 0 that means in left side or uh, left neighborhood of 0 so in that case c would falls between minus pi to c okay so again we can observe that the remainder after 2 it again 
greater than equal to zero. So in the both situation, what we observe that remainder is greater than equal to zero. So what does it simply signify? See in this ratio, this uh, in this uh, bifurcation of cosine of x, cosine of x saying that uh, uh, t2 plus r2 and this quantity is always greater than equal to zero. That means what does it say that? This, this means uh, we are having a polynomial and a cosine is actually defined in such a way t2 plus some positive things. So this cosine is t2 plus some po positive things. What does it simply say that? It says that this function is always greater than or equal to this t2. Greater than or equal to t2. So that's why we are getting it. Um, uh, cosine of x is greater than this infinity. Greater than this uh, algebraic function. 1 minus 1 by 2 x squared. For all x when lies between uh, minus pi to pi okay now for the if you suppose x is uh, greater than pi then what will modulus of x is greater than pi then this infinity is very much obvious easily we can see it through this way this infinity is very much obvious for x greater than modulus of x greater than pi, uh, pi. in that case usually you can see that but only tedious task is that this part when modulus of x is less than equal to Pi. In, the, in this case, you need Taylor's theorem in order to establish the, this infinity. It is very much easy. So, so I think this infinity might be clear to everyone how we can establish this infinity with the help of Taylor's theorem. Now, we will talk about another infinity. <coughs> Any question till now? No. Okay, fine. So, we are going to... Uh, we are going to establish another interesting infinity regarding log 2 function. So suppose uh, here we are taking any natural number k and any real number, uh, positive real number x. Okay. So with respect to this, we can always say that the uh, logarithmic function of 1 plus x with argument 1 plus x, it falls between these two algebraic uh, polynomials. These two polynomials. So this right hand side polynomial is of a degree uh, degree 2k and left hand side polynomial of degree 2k plus 1. So it is very much easy to find upper bound and lower, uh, and, uh, lower bound of this uh, log 1 plus x for any x. Easily you can find. So how we can establish this? So again we have to play the same approach for Taylor's uh, theorem. So what we have to do? We have to come up with the function, respective function. So here we don't... Uh, here it is already f of x equal to log 1 1 plus x and where we are looking here it, you can just focus on that x square x uh, x to the power something is coming that exponent of x is coming that means we simply it suggests that our x naught is zero that means we are dealing in a neighborhood of zero so that it simply suggests that so that's why x naught equal to zero is given now further we can process it like we can find first derivative we can find second derivative we can find even kth derivative so all the all these derivative easily it is uh, computable okay so we can compute all these derivative now let us we talk about the decomposition of the function in the form of taylor polynomial and remainder so we are decomposing like this way so this is the taylor polynomial we can talk about like this way plus this is the remainder after n terms okay so we focus on remainder after n term so it is having an explicit form this remainder is having this explicit form easily you can say that okay so now we focus on the behavior of c where where c would be located okay it depends upon x it as i had already mentioned during the taylor's theorem description that c always depends on the location of x okay where x it it, it is a function of x so we have to focus on that if uh, here it is already given in the statement in hypothesis that c must be greater than zero that means we are not bothering about left side of zero we, we just focus on right side of zero so if c s x is x is from right side of zero that means c would be between uh, 0 and x that means c would be in the right set of 0 simply we can say that so c is having a clear sign that c is greater than 0 easily we can claim that c is greater than 0 in this remainder term what is the scenario here c is greater than 0 very much clear to us there is no uh, any ambiguity over okay okay the so the situation is coming that here one term is coming minus 1 to the power n so this one is ha having oscillatory nature when n is even this term is uh, 1 when n is odd this term is minus 1 so that's why this due to that uh, oscillatory nature the remainder after n term will have variability in sign okay so when if you are taking uh, n equal to 2k that means even sign when n equal to even number 
even number in that case uh, our remainder would be greater than zero but why because um, minus one to uh, one to the power 2k would be one so it by default every year this quantity is greater than zero this quantity is greater than zero this uh, this one is a natural number by default it would be greater than zero so every quantity is greater than zero so and hence we can say that uh, uh, the remainder uh, uh, 2k um, 2k of x it would be greater than 0 if you're taking n equal to 2k plus 1 in that case this quantity will be less than 0 and hence easily we can say that the function would falls between these two inequalities. easily we can say that function falls between these two inequalities. so that is the inequality so i think uh, it is already uh, above 10 30 so we'll discuss other thing in